So somebody left a comment and asked if I could kind of walk them through how TanStack query kind of works in regards to doing a mutation and then refetching the data that might have been modified on a mutation to reshow it in the UI. So we're going to keep this real simple. We're going to do a to-do list example because I think it's something everyone can relate to. And the first thing I'm going to do is I have a database schema here and we're actually going to connect to a real database. So I'm going to say to-dos and then we're going to go ahead and just create a table which I believe we can just say table creator. I am using Drizzle for creating these to-dos. I'll just go ahead and say to-do. And then inside of this, we can go ahead and give it an ID and then probably also some text like this. And then typically you want like a created at and updated at and a completed might be a good idea. So I'll just tab complete that so we can kind of understand how this is kind of working. Typically when you update your schema, you have to go and generate a migration script. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a command, npm run db and generate. That is just going to run the drizzle kit generate command, which is going to find that we need to add a new table. So it's gonna create something called a migration script. You can see here, it's gonna to try to create a to-do table inside my Postgres database. After we do that, we can just go ahead and say db migrate, and that's going to apply that new table to our database. And to kind of show that, I'm gonna load table plus, and I'm gonna show you that new to-do table here. So we have a table that we can now insert entries into. Now, in terms of how we actually store records into that new database table, we're gonna go ahead and make a new route here. Now, when it comes to routes in TanStack Start, you can either have your routes be flat nested. So like you just have like a bunch of files with dots, eliminating your different paths of your route or you can make folders and nest files and folders inside of those folders. I'm gonna go ahead and just say todo.tsx. And notice that the moment you create a new route, it automatically injects some code. That is because this command line tool for running TanStack start automatically watches for new files. And if it finds that you added one to your route directory, it just adds some initial code that kind of get the ground, hit the ground running. So now we can go to todo up here. And you'll see that we have a hello to do. Disregard this top header, we're just gonna kind of move forward with this page. So on this page, the first thing I would typically do is you need to fetch back all of the entries in your database. Remember, we just created a new table called to-dos. So now we wanna fetch back all those records and probably show them in a list somewhere. So one approach that I like to do is you can create something called a server function. So I'm gonna say const get to-dos function equals create server function okay and then we're going to go ahead and give this a handler and then we're going to make sure that we give it an async and we can just go ahead and app complete that a little bit now the way this works is uh we're going to bring in a database object which is going to pretty much grab in that drizzle database object that i kind of talked about and we're going to do a query to get back all of the to do's in my database so now that we have a server function we can actually invoke this in either the isometric loader inside our create file route or inside the component itself. You can actually just say, you know, use query and do the traditional TanStack query approach. I like this approach. I think it's easier. Let's just go ahead and tab complete that. Make sure you import use query. And notice that for the query function, you're gonna pass it that server function here. So now that we have all the to-dos that should hopefully be coming back at some point, we can display them. So in place of this, I'm gonna go ahead and just say, uh, to do's dot map and then we're going to go ahead and just tab complete that because why not and you can see here that we have an array that we're mapping over and for every item that we get back from the database and then you can see here we just displayed the to do text with the key being the to do id okay so hopefully this is good now if we go back to the app notice that nothing will show up and that's because there's nothing in our database okay so now we should probably add a way to create a new to do item so let's actually at the very bottom, I'm gonna say make a form and I'll say input, it's gonna be a type of text and we should be able to submit it. And I'm gonna wrap this whole thing in a container as well so that we can kind of style it if we want to. And inside this form, basically when someone submits this form, we wanna take the value of this input and then we wanna send it over to our backend so we can actually store a new to-do item, okay? Let's make another server function called add to-do function. Look at that tab completion already kind of adding what we need. And in fact, we don't actually wanna do it this way. We wanna actually do something called a validator. So inside of TanStack Start, you can actually pass a Zod object. Hopefully you know what Zod is. And you can actually give it a object like this. And we can go ahead and say text is a Zod string. And now over here, you can actually just get data. 
I'll say data dot text. And then for to do is we need to import this database schema, which is going to be defined in our schema uh, file. OK, so now we have a way to add a to do. And again, these things run on our server, so they don't actually get invoked on the front end. They get invoked from an API call to the back end, which is going to insert this new value directly into our, our database. So we have a form. How do we actually do something when someone tries to submit this? We can say on submit and I can go ahead and just do a inline function like this. We're going to prevent default and then after e prevent default, we're going to say add to do function and we need to actually get the value from this input. So there's different ways you can do this. You can get the form data object from e or if you want to do some type of like control component or uncontrolled input, you could do that as well. I might just say like to do text and then set to do text like this. I'm just going to do some react state over here. And then here I'll say value is equal to to do text. And then we also want to make sure we update it when someone actually types into this input. Okay, so we're tracking state for the input. When someone submits the form, we actually want to take that text and pass it as a data object. This is something that's kind of interesting about tan stack start. When you're trying to call a server function, you actually have to pass it this object that has a data property and then you actually pass it the thing that you want. This right here is going to match whatever your Zod schema is. So if you go up to your validator, notice that we have an object with a text property. That is how you kind of map that in properly. And then of course you could probably just put an async in here and then you could like await on this and then we can reset the to do text back to nothing if this thing were to successfully submit. And then of course add some error handling. If something goes wrong, you can show a toast. You could show some type of inline um, errors or use something like react form hooks um, to make it nice and clean. Well, let's test this out. So now that we can just go back to our app and refresh and we have an input here. It's very hard to see, but trust me, it's there. And we can just go ahead and say like, hello world. I'll click add. And then we're going to go to our database and double check that now we have an entry that has been persisted. Cool. So the data got added, but now to address the original issue and the reason I'm making this video for that comment is I believe he wants to figure out a way of like, how do I tell the page to refresh the data, right? So there's a couple ways you can do it. If you did the use query like I did, all you have to do is pull in a refetch method here. And you can actually alias this if you want to and call it like refetch to do's and simply just call it after this. Um, you can wait on it. You could, uh, I don't think you even have to wait on it. Yeah, it's not a promise. You don't even have to wait on it. You can just go ahead and call it. And now let me show you now, if I type in some information and click add, notice that there is a slight delay because it does actually have to make another API request to the back end to get the new full list of to do's and add them to the page. But that is one approach. Just basically force this original query to refetch the data and then your UI will just update. Now, if you're the type of person that says this is not very performant, there are different ways you can achieve this. So we can go ahead and bring in the query client. I'll say use query client like this, and I'll make sure I type that correctly. And so if we have the query client, one thing that we could potentially do is instead of having to refetch all the to do's, we can actually just invalidate the queries and have that automatically fetch whatever that query is. So I'm showing you a second approach where basically you can invalidate something based on this query key. And this is useful if for some reason your query is like in another component, like maybe three levels up the tree, but you want this deeply nested child to be able to invalidate that top level query so that everything just refetches. Other than that, you have to like basically take this refetch to do's and you have to prop drill it down three or four levels until that child component has access to it. Okay, so let's try it this way as well. This is like one other approach. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say like, what is up? I'll click add and notice that again, it's going to make yet another network request after we successfully added that to do item because we're telling React Query that it needs to refetch a new updated value of that cache key. Now the third approach, which might be good to know about is instead of just refetching all the data, we could have this add method return the whole to do that we just Created. So in Drizzle, you can say dot returning, and I can get back the to do that was just added, and I can return it here. So if you look at this, we'll have a to do item with these properties on it. Let's go to where this is called, and instead, we're going to say new to do is equal to that. So we'll get back the value of that new to do. And then what we need to do is basically just say query client set query data, and we can just append it. 
okay? I'll just put it any for right now, just so that I can kind of move faster, but you should probably type that correctly. But notice what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we need to actually change whatever's in our cache locally on the client for that to-dos key. Notice that they match. But then we want to append that new to-do inside that array. And then once you call this method, it'll instantaneously update. Like it won't be a delay. It'll just like quickly happen. So let me show you this again. I'm going to say testing. I'll click add and it actually gets added much faster. If you want to add some throttling like fast 4G, I'll just test this out again. I'll click add and notice that it just adds it instantly. Now the difference, if I were to kind of revert that change a little bit, I'll say query client dot invalidate query. Let me show you the difference with the uh, request speed. Okay, let's go back to fast 4G and I'm going to say what is up and I'll click add and notice that there is like a small delay. And in fact, if I even slow this down even more and say testing, testing, click add, notice that it like freezes for a second and then the data comes. So if you want this to load kind of like seamless for a user, this is one approach you can do. Um, I would just make sure that your types are really accurate because if your backend doesn't return the exact thing that your front end needs, you may run into issues if you push the wrong type of data into this client query. And then your other components that are depending on that query cache key could start breaking. So now there's also something called an optimistic update that I'm not going to cover in this video, but I think I showed you three different approaches that you can kind of like add data to your database and then force the client to refresh it. Now, the last thing I want to mention is that if you're using something like a loader, it's a little bit different to fetch that data, right? So like if you're using a loader here, one approach is you can actually return the to do's from your loader. Let me just go ahead and comment some stuff out um, just so that we're kind of on the same page. So over here, what we could do is we can say const to do's is equal to route dot use loader data. Okay, and this is going to give you back whatever was returned from this loader. Now, the difference with this approach is you still have to figure out a way to like revalidate the loader. Okay, and so down here, what we do, instead of saying query client and validate queries or whatever, I believe we can actually say const router is equal to use router. And then we can go down here and say router dot, is it reload, uh, refresh? And I think you say router dot invalidate. And I think that'll force it to basically refetch the data. Let's try this out again. I'm kind of getting to experimental mode. I'm still learning about tan stack start. So let's go over here again. I'm going to say testing. I'm going to click add and notice that it does add it. And then it reloads the data and it doesn't do like a full page refresh, right? So this is yet another way you can do it. Now the issue with this approach and be sure to leave a comment if I totally got this wrong, but I'm pretty sure when you invalidate this, it'll just rerun whatever the loader is on the client side and refetch that data and then repopulate whatever this hook is and then re-render the page, right? The issue with this approach is let's say you actually have like five different things you're fetching from the loader. That is going to rerun all of those database calls and refetch all that data and then re-render your whole tree with all that data, okay? So I would probably say don't use this router on invalidate. This kind of reminds me of Next.js with like the invalidate path method. Personally, I would just stick with the set query data or invalidate queries or just do a refetch call like I mentioned. Leave a comment below if there's another approach that I didn't mention here. I'm sure there is. There's a bunch of different ways you can do stuff in coding, but I would highly appreciate it because I'm trying to level up my game in terms of tan stack start and learning more about it. So I'd appreciate it. Leave a comment. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a good day and happy coding.